It is 8 a.m. Sunday in Port Hedland, Western Australia on this 24th of February and it looks as though we will see classification of a Category 1 cyclone within the next 24 hours. The latest track from the Bureau of Meteorology indicates that the tropical low currently north of Port Hedland is going to strengthen into a Category 3 severe cyclone by 2 a.m. on Tuesday and we can expect that weather conditions right along the coastline are going to rapidly go downhill throughout Tuesday morning and afternoon. An upgrade to Category 1 cyclone intensity appears to be imminent based on the latest early morning visible satellite image. You can see that the surface circulation is becoming more vigorous with time with those banding features in the low levels becoming more prominent and as we turn on the enhanced infrared satellite animation some of the convection that was displaced well away from the center of circulation is beginning to consolidate near the center. Although the center of circulation is not that far away from the coastline, we are not expecting the landfall to occur until sometime Tuesday evening because the steering currents are not going to be overly dominant. We do see that right now there is a trough progressing eastward through western Australia to the south, but this trough is not going to be strong enough to begin pulling the cyclone to the south very quickly. Rather, we are expecting the passage of a second trough within about 60 to 72 hours and this is expected to bring the system towards the coastline. You can see the progression of this on the latest ECMWF model forecast at the zero hour initialization. The tropical low is located to the northwest of Broome. The blue and green colors denote the trough that we saw progressing to the east right now on the water vapor imagery. In 24 hours this trough will bypass the tropical cyclone leaving it to meander across the far eastern Indian Ocean. But as we go into 48 hours, you can see the second trough beginning to approach. And by day three, it is now amplifying as it moves through the Bight of Australia. And the storm is being impacted by the trough and starting to move inland. And as we turn to the surface representation from the ECMWF model, valid as of 8 p.m. local time Tuesday evening, we see the vigorous, severe tropical cyclone beginning to make landfall just to the east of Port Hedland. The storm surge values directly within Port Hedland would not be overly high because you are seeing southerly to northerly winds, so these are offshore winds, and the greatest surge values would be localized along 80 Mile Beach, and I am still very concerned about any coastal communities there that are very prone to sea level water rise because the storm surge will be rather significant if the forecasted intensity does in fact verify. The ECMWF has also been very consistent in terms of its forecast track and intensity of this cyclone over the past 48 to 72 hours. So this does give us added confidence in this model forecast. So now is definitely the time to make your cyclone precautions well in advance before the conditions begin to rapidly deteriorate. You will start to feel the effects or the, at least the outer fringes of the cyclone as we work our way into the day Monday. And by Tuesday, the weather conditions will be too hostile for any last minute preparations by that time. So take advantage of the next 24 to 48 hours, especially once again if you are in Port Hedland on eastward. And again, this track forecast is not 100% confidence just yet. There is still enough time for this to wiggle a little bit back toward the east or towards the west. As a matter of fact, we are still seeing some variance between the different models here. This is a look at the 18Z run of the American GFS. And over the next 24 to 48 hours, there's really not too much of a difference between the European and American GFS model solutions. But as we go between 72 and 96 hours, notice that the center of the cyclone is hugging the coast a little longer. And it also deviates a little to the west of Port Hedland and this is the first time we've seen any model really showing this scenario as of late and as of right now the GFS is the westernmost model the other models including the Canadian CMC along with the UK Met are in much more agreement with the European if not a little bit more toward 80 mile beach so right now we are not really believing or buying into this GFS solution but it's still definitely something for interest on westward say perhaps near Karatha to keep a very close eye on so why is the GFS now trending a little bit more toward the west? Well, as we look at the mid-level steering pattern being forecast by the model, as we go into 24 hours, we see that the troughing down toward the south flattens out, and this is something that pretty much all of the models agree on. But as we go into 48 and 72 hours, the second trough quickly moves towards the east, and in this particular model, it's not latching on to the tropical cyclone compared to what the other models are showing. So that leaves the tropical cyclone left right along the coastline, 
and a temporary return of ridging near Perth would promote a slightly more westward track with a gradual west-southwest motion, and that is what the GFS is depicting in the most recent run. But again, this is just one model showing this idea. The other models show the second trough successfully capturing the tropical cyclone, thus inducing a more southerly movement. Here is the latest look at the 12Z run of the UK Met model, and as we just talked about, the UK Met along with the CMC are in much more agreement with the ECMWF, which has also been highly consistent over the past 72 hours. As a matter of fact, it looks as though the UK Met and CMC are just to the east of the European solution and a little closer to the Kimberley coast along with Broome. So, although we are 24 to 48 hours well into this event, you can see that there is still quite a lot of model variance, which is to be expected because we do not have a cyclone just yet. It is still nothing more than a tropical low, and the models have a very hard time forecasting the tracks of these tropical lows as they slowly strengthen. Last but not least, this is the 12Z CMC model output, and as you can see, we still have better model agreement to the east of the GFS solution with the track going directly over 80 Mile Beach as we work our way into Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening. So 80 Mile Beach, you still appear to be under the gun for the highest storm surge values and Port Hedland is still certainly well within the thick of it. So today is the day to make your preparations if you live right along the coast or even just inland because this is going to be a heavy rainfall event potentially. So do everything you can now before the weather escalates over the next 48 hours. In the meantime, we are going to continue to monitor this developing tropical low for you here at 28storms.com along with our partners at Oz Cyclone Chasers and also Pilbara Weather. You can find both of those networks on Facebook.